everyone. Today I'm joined by Abu Bakr um, to talk about the DP500 certification courses that are launching on Enterprise DNA. So um, thank you for joining me. And um, before we get into the course, I thought maybe you could do a bit of a quick introduction of yourself and your background um, and why you've kind of decided to, to bring these courses to us. Thank you for having me, Kobal, uh, on the, on your show or on the on the video. Um, actually, uh, my background is is a bit diverse. I'm primarily a project management uh, consultant and a project management specialist, and I have uh, been doing data anal analysis for a very long time. And for the last five years, I've been using Power BI, and for the last two years, I have been uh, teaching courses related to Power BI. I am an, an enterprise DNA expert for for at least one year. And uh, I think it was uh, last uh, last uh, June that this DP500 certification was uh, was rolled out, June or July. And then um, Brian approached me to uh, if I was interested in doing a course for the for the enterprise DNA learning portal. And I and I said that I am interested. So I had uh, very recently done my DP500 uh, course certification, and then I decided to you know do the, the develop this course. So, so my background, uh, me primarily uh, for the last two years is is doing apart from the project management work is uh, doing Power BI consultancy work uh, that I do and I teach courses uh, in the corporate sector as well as my uh, public trainings and I conduct and conduct those uh, primarily in uh, in our local language which is uh, Urdu or Hindi and uh, and obviously uh, in English as well. Okay, great. You sound like the perfect person to be uh, de delivering this. Um, so um, can you give everyone a quick overview of um, what is the DP500 about? Like, what does it assess your ability to do? Yeah, so the DP500, like I said, it was uh, it was in beta for, I think, four or five months in 2022. And then it came, uh, rolled, rolled out, I think it, it was in uh, late, late June or in uh, early July. And this is the advanced level uh, certification, and it is called the Azure Enterprise Data Analyst. So, so the word Azure uh, basically comes into the picture, and and a, a significant part of this uh, certification exam is on the Azure Synapse Analytics um, uh, tool suite, which is there on the Azure portal. So, if I talk about the DP500 and how it is different from the the other Microsoft certification, which is the PL300. So, this is a, a more uh, advanced in terms of uh, the content, and it obviously requires you to have worked in Power BI uh, for at, at least at least one or one or two years. And um, the in terms of the content, like I said, the Azure part is new, and then the other part which is new is the are the, are the external tools that uh, people have developed for for Power BI. So those are the two areas which are entirely new and not covered in PL uh, in the PL three hundred curriculum. But the rest of the curriculum is 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 kind of the same, but obviously the uh, the level of uh, uh, you know expertise or the level of um, of the content is a bit more uh, on the on the higher side than the PL three hundred. So you the, all the the four pillars that we talk about the loading and transformation, the data modeling, DAX, and the visualization, and, and obviously the Power BI service. All of these are already there in PL three hundred, but the advanced concepts. Are introduced in the DP DP 500. So it is uh, those five pillars, and then there's a, a, a significant portion on Azure Synapse Analytics and the uh, the tools that people have developed, the external tools, uh, primarily DAX Studio and Tabular Editor, which are covered in the syllabus. Okay, great. Um, so before we get into the the course itself, um, I wanted to get your thoughts on um, all of the topics that you've just mentioned that are, are covered in this exam, how does that benefit people to like have this certification? Why did, why is it like valuable for employers um, to kind of see that? Yeah, that's a very, very good question. So uh, if you have, uh, if you're a, you know, new user of Power BI, then you start off by building your basics on the four pillars that we talk about in all our videos on enterprise DNA. Then, as you grow in your role as a as a Power BI developer or as a data analyst, then there are things that you need to understand in terms of the optimization. 
especially on the data modeling side and the, the DAX portion of the, of the Power BI uh, development. And then there is another portion which requires you to have the administrative uh, know-how of the Power BI service that you need to govern uh, the, the, the rollout of the Power BI or the administration part of the Power BI. So it brings together all of these aspects. And if people are willing to grow within the organization into a role where they are, you know, doing something extra in terms of just not the, not just the development, but also the administration or the data governance part, then obviously this is very helpful to them. And on the other side, once you are, uh, you know, starting off, you are, you are dealing with relatively smaller data sets, relatively smaller uh, data models. But as you grow into the role and as you become more familiar with the powers that Power BI has to offer, then obviously the data modeling part gets complex. The tax uh, part gets a bit, uh, you know, more complex. Then uh, the Azure uh, cloud it itself offers something very unique, and Power BI is now an integral part of that, and that is the Azure Synapse Analytics Suite. So there, you know how you can, you know, connect uh, to different data sources and use the power of Azure Synapse to build something really, uh, you know, at an enterprise scale within uh, within the whole power bi ecosystem so so again if you are working in power bi and you want to you know enhance your knowledge and grow into a role that involves the use of uh, azure tools and azure um, uh, you know cloud then that is obviously the next step for uh, any data analyst or any power bi developer okay great um so in terms of these courses then um what is the kind of required knowledge or skill level for people who are thinking to to take this course? What kind of like level of knowledge should they have? Yeah, so so obviously you need to uh, have a good sound knowledge of the basics of Power BI, and that uh, requires at least one year of working in a full fledged Power BI analyst or Power BI developer role. That is probably the the the, the bare minimum requirement. And if you have done the, the, the other certification that I mentioned, PL300, then obviously that is a big uh, advantage, but this is not a prerequisite for appearing in the DP500 exam. So uh, I would say at least one year of experience. And if you have done uh, more work and if you have more experience, the more the better. And you have already, if you already have the knowledge of uh, data governance or data administration using Power BI service, then that's obviously another advantage. Uh, but uh, generally, I think one to two years is a, is a good uh, starting point. Uh, but if you are a newbie, this is not for you. So, so just don't, you know, think about going and, you know, taking this exam because it could be uh, a really, uh, you know, hard, hard nut to, uh, hard nut to crack. <laughs> okay, got it. Um, so uh, in terms of the actual courses, then I wanted to talk a bit about the, how the kind of, you've structured the courses um there are so much there's so much video content resources yeah. that you're providing that it's actually been split into two parts that we're launching yes. simultaneously um so i was hoping you could kind of talk us through what do the two different parts cover and and how are they kind of structured okay so the course is exactly as per the, the official syllabus of the DP500 exam. And in that you have uh, four learning paths. Uh, and within each learning path, there are sections. And within each section, there are, uh, there are certain topics. So I think if I remember correctly, there are like 49 or 50 topics that have to be covered in these four learning paths. So, so uh, we decided to split this into two uh, separate courses because we have made a video on each topic. And for some videos, uh, there is uh, there are certain parts within each for each topic. So in one part, the, just the theoretical or the uh, or the working aspect is covered, and then the other part is on you know on a real world uh, hands on example or a demo that is covered. So in most of the videos, you're going to uh, you're going to find um, you know multiple parts for for uh, for uh, a certain topic. So what we have done is that we have followed the four uh, principles that we follow uh, in our all our enterprise DNA videos. And, and the first thing that you do in Power BI is once you open a, any Power BI project or a file is that you go and connect to a data source. So, so that is the first uh, learning path that we have done. And uh, that is the first 
learning a path in the in the first part of the course is where we are talking about connecting to different data sources and azure synapse analytics is is one of those sources which is covered then once you have done all the you know connection and you have done the transformation and loading and and you know uh, uh, the uh, and you know about azure synapse and what it has to offer then the, then you are ready to actually go and do the data modeling and start writing the the dax so the second part of uh, the second learning path uh, that we have covered and uh, which is there in the first part of the course is the data modeling and dax part so there there you you learn about the the tools which are used to optimize the data modeling uh, process dax studio tableau editor then what are the best practices that you have to follow for data modeling writing dax and and stuff like that and once you are done with that then obviously the 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 next part is building the visualizations and here we move into the second part of the course which is the part 2 and here we are talking about the the different uh, features power bi has to offer in terms of building the visualizations so this is uh, i would say that the smallest part or the smallest learning path in the whole course and there is the last part where once you have done everything you have made your report you have published it to power bi service then comes the data governance the data administration and then the uh, the something which uh, uh, people are now understanding with power bi solutions being developed at an enterprise level is the life cycle management that how you are going to manage the life cycle of the of the report so so all the all of that is then uh, uh, covered in the fourth learning path path uh, fourth learning path which is um, uh, i would say the biggest Uh, section or the biggest learning path of the whole uh, course and that again is in the part 2 so so in short the part 1 is split into two learning paths which is the uh, the first uh, one is connecting to the data sources and the data modeling and the second part of the course is on about all about the visualization aspects and the power bi governance and administration okay got it um and so it's Uh, as you mentioned you've quite extensively covered um all the topics that that could come up um in the syllabus um and as part of the course you've also added in some practice questions and like a yes. final assessment so what should for it's quite a lot of content to um to go yeah. through because the the nature of the exam is is such so how would you suggest people approach um kind of getting through these courses what kind of strategy should they should they have yeah so so i would suggest that uh, if if somebody is is interested in doing the dp500 exam uh, then you start off with the part 1 of the course and go through the same process that we go in power bi first you connect to the data sources so so the, here the first uh, aspect of as you synapse is covered most of the stuff people already know about the other data sources but if you don't know about uh, some of those then spend your time and at the end of each section we have a practice questions that you need to uh, you know solve those questions and know where uh, you know how is your knowledge you 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 go and test your knowledge and then obviously once you're done with the first um, first uh, learning path of the first part go to the second uh, learning path of the of the part 1 once you're done with part 1 then you are almost done with 50% of the of the entire syllabus and then again you you can you know go and solve the practice questions and once you are done with part 1 and you have uh, quite understood what are the key concepts uh, in terms of um, data modeling and uh, and as you said synapse analytics suite then you can go and uh, you know start the part 2 and here uh, like i mentioned the bulk of the portion is uh, is about the data governance part and obviously most people they are not very much familiar my very com- very much comfortable about data governance and they, here uh, i think there is uh, i think one segment on microsoft purview which is again part of the azure synapse analytics suite although it's 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 a bit it's not exactly a part of the azure synapse analytics suite but it is a separate uh, service on the microsoft azure platform but that is something which is very very important if you, are, uh, you want to understand what data governance is all about so i would say that uh, uh, the the course has been split into two equal parts so it's like 50% is the part 1 and 50% content is covered in part 2 but if you feel like you are so much Uh, you don't uh, you feel overwhelmed you can't cover that in one go then you can you know uh, uh, cover one part at a time spend some time revising the concepts and once you are done with part 1 then you can go and move into part 2 uh, and then obviously at, at the end of part 2 you can uh, do the uh, the exam 
the practice exam that has that is included and then you are uh, ready to go and appear in the exam okay great uh, and just coming back to the point of um uh perhaps people feeling like they need to revise some of the concepts one thing that i found really useful is that at each topic you give a kind of summary of other resources that um, would yeah. be helpful for certain areas um, and so if people want to go away and look at those and feel like uh, they need to kind of get up to speed a bit better they can go away and look at those and then come back and revisit your your course and, yeah. and feel like they understand it a bit better and, and I thought that was yeah a really useful thing because quite often people have specific targeted knowledge gaps rather than um kind of the whole the whole thing so yeah that's that's one thing i thought was was really yeah easy. yeah yeah uh, i think uh, within even our uh, enterprise dna portal a lot of people have developed uh, courses which go into uh, into much more depth than some of the topics that i have covered and i, and I would give I would give an example is uh, that paginated reports is one of the topics that is covered in the exam and we have two full fledged courses uh, on the enterprise DNA portal, just targeting the paginated reports. So if somebody is really interested in learning more about the paginated reports, so, so these kind of resources have or have been uh, mentioned in the videos that this course is, uh, is available and you can you know just go there and have a look at that. And outside the, the enterprise DNA portal, a lot of people have put up uh, public uh, you know, resources, uh, very good resources, which can be used to, you know, uh, learn more about the data modeling aspects, uh, the 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 some of the 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 tools, uh, the tools like Tag Studio and Tableau Editor. They can also go there and you know learn more about those. So it's so it, I I would say it 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 has a a dual approach of not only passing the exam but also mastering something that you actually want to learn in for your day to day requirement. So I've I've tried to you know kind of uh, mix both of these things. Okay, perfect. Um, so uh, I think uh, that has hopefully given everyone a really good insight into the courses and what they can expect. Um, do you have any final tips for anyone preparing to, to take this exam? Uh, yes, I, I would say that this is a very uh, important course in terms of not only putting something on your portfolio, uh, as a professional, uh, if you have done the Azure Enterprise Data Analytics, uh, Data Analyst certification, that obviously add more uh, more value to your uh, your profile and your portfolio, and and then there is a lot of learning uh, in itself uh, on some of the topics that are not normally touched, uh, like the data modeling, why data modeling is important, how you optimize your data model, how you optimize. Uh, the tax learn the, the 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 your tax writing experience some of those things which people normally uh, are not very uh, very you know careful about in their day to day development so there's uh, you know a lot of learning from that angle as well. Okay, great. Um, well, thank you so much for your time, and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing some a lot of newly certified people uh, very soon after after doing this course. Yeah, hopefully. Thank you very much for having me uh, on on your on this video. Thank you. Thank you.